It oh is. Something my. distracted him. Oh, wait, what is that? Looks like they got some you organs. Got Give me that damn bone. <laughs> Testicle. I ain't I'm no balls, lying. man. If you eat food like this, you will look like me. And uh, if you're willing to bet on yourself, you're taking a risk on yourself, you make a lot of money. And people say, well, sales is not for me. Do you realize that everything that you do involves sales? So this is usually the normal progression for a lot of people to become an entrepreneur. Hey, listen, but I said, you know what? Ready, fire, then aim. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapala here. Hey, to you from Dallas, Texas. And in this episode, we have a reaction to Liver King. My team brought this to my attention. Um, Liver King apparently made six figures by the time he was 21 years old, $5.2 million a year by the time he was 25 years old, uh, ran a dental business, but he wasn't a dentist. And uh, recently he just admitted that he's taken steroids. So uh, reaction to the Liver King, there's always some things we can find out about money with people online. Is it real? Is it fake? Let's jump right in. Uh, so, so she, I was uh, riding up a lift. I was with my, my best friend at the time, at that uh, stage of my life, best man in, the, in each other's weddings. His name is Jeff mm -hmm. Parchman. We're on a, a lift together on a chairlift. It's his first time going up the mountain and I'm probably about 150 yards in front of me. I see her snapping on her snowboard and all I see is a ponytail and a helmet. She's wearing goggles, right? But like, this is what I figured out in life. This is work hard, mm -hmm. right? I mean, how many people are, are going to go take that rep? I mean, I'd taken that rep. I already had a date set up that day, right? Cause I'd already taken that many reps. And so this was another rep and, and she didn't give me the time of day. She kept snowboarding. She, she, I don't, she says that she didn't hear me, but, um, then I caught okay, 30 seconds into this interview here on the ice coffee hour here with, uh, Graham Stephan. Uh, I remember Graham Stephan came out to our conference uh, a couple months ago in August of 2022. Uh, he was a guest of our CEO founder. Uh, apparently he was in interviewing, uh, Patrick, but David, at the MGM Grand. And uh, I remember seeing uh, Graham Stephan here watching our Gala Night, awards Gala Night. He was just enamored by uh, what was going on and trying to make sense of this life insurance industry conference. But uh, good to see him here with a, a show called The Ice Coffee Hour, interviewing Liver King. My observation of Liver King right off the jump, uh, he's got no shirt on, he's got a beard, he's got a hat to the back. That's his brand. So if you're wondering why uh, this guy is without a shirt, beard this this is his thing so if you're building a business uh how do people remember you with your brand is it a hat is it a t-shirt is it a certain look is it your haircut is it your color of hair what is your brand building a personal brand because i believe today that not only do you have to create a brand for your company but you also have to create a personal brand that drives your brand to your company so for example if you take a look at elon musk what did he do he drove his brand towards tesla who did it better by the way jeff bezos and amazon or elon musk and tesla and spacex and, and, and solar city etc Obviously, Elon Musk wins that battle. Who did it best? Was it Steve Jobs with Apple or was it Bill Gates with, with Microsoft? Who did it better? Obviously, Steve Jobs. So it's building not only a company and its brand, but also your personal brand as a leader, thought leader in your space. So here I see this guy. I see why a lot of people have been attracted to his, his stuff uh, pre his announcement that he's on steroids because he's branded. He's fit. He's got his, he's got his shirt off. He's got his, he's got his shoulders and his chest showing. He's got his beard, his hat to the back consistent with his brand, building it up. Then I caught her in the lift line and I just said, Hey, where's the rest of your crew? And she said, Oh, my nephew, he's in, he's in ski school. And I'm like, Oh, cool. That means you like me. And I said, I know this mountain. Let me show you around. And I mean, as soon as we got into the chairlift and I saw her face and I, and I looked into her eyes, I could feel, I knew this. I'd never been in a real serious relationship in my life. So we got engaged in like six or seven weeks. We got married a few, like a couple months after that. And right? now that was 18 years ago. And so immediately, um, when I learned that her background was in dentistry and she moved to Texas, she said, uh, Hey, I'm, uh, I want to go you know, work for this kind of practice. And I said, well, why don't we start a business? And so we vertically integrated, we, we, we bought a dental practice. We vertically integrated that and we started business there. And so that's really where, um, I went from a couple of kind of corporate jobs to I'm going to go in on this all in on this full time. And let's, let's just talk about those first couple of jobs real quick. How much were you making at each job? Mm. And then talking about, you know, potentially how you scaled that dentistry business. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. 21 year old making like a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And I mean, pharmaceutical sales pay really well. For if you're 21? good at it. Yeah. If you're good at it, you could make a ton of money. What even is yeah. a far, like, do you, are you, you the could, person you that- I remember that this is also back in like yeah. 1999. <laughs> this is like- oh. By the way, uh, pharmaceutical salespeople are legal drug dealers. You're selling Viagra, you're selling all sorts of drugs to pharmacists, you're selling local drugs to doctors, you're soaking local drugs. You're just getting your drug out there. You're representing a drug company. You're getting it out, you're getting it out there. So my wife did something similar. My wife was a medical sales 
not pharmaceutical sales, but my wife is in medical sales. And that's how I met my wife because she was selling hospital beds for Stryker Medical. So yes, if you are young, if you are hot, most likely it's a 100% commission job, but the commissions are very decent. So uh, if you've got a degree, usually these pharmaceutical sales or medical sales type of companies, they're very good recruiters on college campuses. They love recruiting athletes. They love recruiting people that are high performers. And uh, if you're willing to bet on yourself, you're taking a risk on yourself, you make a lot of money in pharmaceutical sales. Flip side, no upside, but at the same time, no basement. Go grow it. And then we're going to bonus you, incentivize you on that. And then when I realized, oh, all it takes is hard work, a little bit of ingenuity. You know, I had President's Club on the first year really just by working hard, right? And I remember oftentimes like doctors would challenge you, right? Um, and and they, they would ask you, okay, what's the mechanism of action here? What's a detox pathway? And I remember, um, oh, I'm not really sure what that is. If you give me five minutes, I'll have a definitive answer for you and I'll knock it out of the park and I'm going to provide unequivocal value. I'm not giving you five minutes. I got to go see patients. You're done. I'll, ne I'll never respect you again. That's what they said with their eyes, right? Yeah. So I went back to the car and I would read the package insert and I would call the clinical team and then I learned about all the cytochrome P450 pathways, you name it. So the next time somebody asked me that, you know like, answer. Oh, that's not happening again, right? So as a pharmaceutical rep, it's really all about influence, right? It's, it's about getting time with a doctor basically to, to say why your drug is better than another drug. Or maybe even, you know, as I look at this, you know, I, I just had an interview with Adam Sostek, his Jewish background, his Jewish heritage. There's a lot of things that were said in, in his, his Jewish upbringing. It said either be a doctor, be an attorney, or get involved in sales. Either way, all those three things make a lot of money if you're willing to bet on yourself or bet on somebody hiring you to employ you, bet on your education. But when I got involved in insurance sales, when I got involved in the insurance business, I just came out the Marine Corps. And I, I wish I could tell you I got involved in the insurance business because I was very pragmatic and very specific on what type of career I wanted after the military. No, I got a job in insurance business because I needed to pay my bills. First and 15th of the month, I had a guaranteed paycheck with the military. That was all gone. And I needed to find an industry where I could be a single father. I can drop up my kids off at nine o'clock and pick them up by three o'clock. And I needed flexibility in my schedule, autonomy with, with, uh, with what I wanted to be in my life, the type of income that I want to make to live in the neighborhoods I want to live in. And that for me was sales. That for me was insurance sales. I don't have a college degree. I don't have a sales background. I don't have a business background. And I relate to a lot of things that he said here, that when things, uh, objections come up and money is on the table and you don't know the answer, yep, you lose you lose out and that helps you build thick skin. That helps you build the fact that you gotta be a student of business, you gotta be a student of your product. So therefore we are able to go out there and sell. You overcome a lot of objections. You're able to increase a lot of confidence. You're able to project confidence because simply you're just a student of your business. You're a student of your craft. You're mastering what it is that you're marketing. You're mastering what it is that you're representing. So when we met, she was making about 250,000 a year. I was making about 250,000 a year. And we're like, hey, let's combine forces. Yeah, Let's buy a dental practice. And then, uh, and so we, we turned um, a practice that was doing $400,000 a year into uh, within one year, it was doing 1.2. So this is usually the normal progression for a lot of people to become an entrepreneur. You go out and say, you know what? I want to go out and start my own business. And people say, well, sales is not for me. Do you realize that everything that you do involves sales? Sales is not for me. Do you realize just in that statement alone, you're actually selling something? You're selling yourself a limiting belief. You're selling yourself that you can't do something. You're selling yourself that everybody can do it, but not me. I can't improve. I can't grow. I can't develop, become a better person. That is exactly what you're selling yourself. And guess what? You're selling. So when people say, I can't sell you, listen, you either sell yourself that you can believe in your faith that you're going to grow, or you sell yourself on your fears that everybody can do it, but you, that you're worried so much about the opinion of other people. You're so worried so much about that people say no, that you're unwilling to overcome that. And therefore you starve and you settle for just a J-O-B without being personally affecting your ability to grow and control your income. Within three years, I was doing 5.2. And so- and, and What do you credit that to? How did you do that? You know, um, really it's such low hanging fruit. You know, like most, most lawyers are out of the curve but most accountants, doctors, dentists, you, you, they don't know anything about business. They know very little about business, right? And so all it took was like looking at the books and then seeing, I'm like, oh, those are a lot of bills. Who's, who are those bills going to? Oh, we're referring you know, over to these guys. We're, we're referring over to this imaging center, Wilson Radiographic. And like, oh, cool. Uh, how much does it cost to buy a MRI machine? It's not that much. Oh, we're paying all these bills over to the dental lab. Would you buy our own equipment? How much does it cost to start our own dental lab? Oh, it's not that much, right? So we started to vertically integrate all what all the yeah. stuff that it's all first principle thing. And I had no background really in business other than the experience, right? I think people really undervalue first principle thinking, right? And just getting to work. Because I tell people this all the time. I was on the uh, Alex Hermosi wouldn't give me the time of day, and then he gave me the time of day. 
And we started talking. He's like, hey, how, how are you successful? I'm like, you know how I'm successful? Is all I do is shoot, 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 aim. Shoot, 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 right? I take such massive action that these guys that are TEDx smarter than me, they're still coming up with strategy. All I'm doing is taking massive action and course correcting along the way. Of course, I've made mistakes along the way. This is what I do. There, there's definitely value behind that. Listen, when I got involved in business to myself, it's not like I had a formal business plan. It's not like I had a mentor that exactly knew where I was going. I had zero mentor. But I said, you know what? Ready, fire, then aim. Ready, I'm ready to go. Fire, let's do this. Aim, okay, let me calibrate. Let me reassess. Let me adjust. Same principle that Liver King is talking about here. And I think that's a valuable universal principle that everybody in any endeavor in any business can relate to and actually adopt. So therefore, a lot of people, they have uh, this thing called paralysis by analysis. While most people are thinking and trying to perfect something, somebody that's taken massive action is already five, 10 light years ahead of you and they're willing to adjust and they got experience along the way, not just being smart, but gaining wisdom along the way. So you combine both not just being smart and wise, but being smart and wise both at the same time. This is what I attribute it to is really mm -hmm. massive action, first principle of thinking, right? Normally I hire a consultant and when I hire the consultant, I'm like, that's exactly what I'm not gonna do. Cause this is what everybody knows to do, mm -hmm. right? He might provide some insight, but almost always I ask my first principle of thinking type questions. Oh no, you can't, people don't, by dental labs that are dentists. You know, we're referring all this business out. We referred $2 billion out to oral surgery, like in the first, you know, well, we didn't, but the, the previous uh, doctor had. Why don't we just bring all that in house? And why don't we just pay a percent to these guys? Mm. So we, we brought in every discipline of dentistry. We, we built the first vertically integrated dental center that, center that had all disciplines of dentistry. And again, this is just like basic thinking, sure. right? I guarantee you everyone here could figure that out. And, and so we called it Dentique Dentistry. It was the first vertically integrated boutique dental center. And you could get comprehensive care there. The, the, there's, the opportunity in dentistry is incredible, right? This is oral health. This was really never her fight though. This was never really my fight. It was, a, it was an interesting opportunity, right? That kind of fell in our lap. And so we did this for about a decade. You no, know, we do a lot of the same relative things uh, being in the insurance business. We're, especially right now during the housing recession, we're talking a lot with real estate offices. We're talking a lot with real estate attorneys, loan officers that have a massive drop in year over year activity, down, down activity from 2022 versus 2021. Last year, 2021, they had 10, 15, 20 offers on any property. You had loan officers, 20, 30, 40 deals a month. Uh, right now, completely different. This is a uh, text message from a loan officer we were talking to earlier this year that uh, they're down not only on revenue, but also down on volume in terms of new applications coming in. This is a very good friend of mine, Amir Syed, uh, how he's coaching a lot of loan officers to brace for impact during this housing recession and to continue to be valuable after the recession. These tough times are over. But we're talking all the time right now with the advent of what Keller Williams said, what they're trying to do with their own real estate agent to coach them and teach them to become quote unquote called wealth advisors. We're doing something very simple, not that advanced, but we're just, hey, listen, if you're a real estate agent, if you're a loan officer, consider adding insurance into your practice because in between closings, you can talk to them about retirement planning. In between closing, you can talk to them about college planning. In between closing, you can help make sure they have a mortgage protection plan because you as a real estate agent, you as a loan officer, just help them acquire the greatest asset at the same time, the greatest liability and a real estate license and a mortgage license helps clients get their American dream during their best financial times but insurance license helps them keep the greatest financial asset during the worst of times. So therefore making a vertical integration of insurance into your practice simply makes sense because you're probably doing it anyway. We got strategies and how to help people pay off their mortgage sooner and faster without sending extra mortgage payments to the bank because the bank gets wealthier for you doing that, not yourself individually, because the only way to get equity and money back from the property is either you have to sell the property or have to refinance the property based on their terms, based on their interest rates, based on their fees to get your own money back and we're doing the integration and say, listen, once you just redirect the $500 extra month or $1,000 extra month into insurance-based retirement account, uh, insurance plan. So therefore you have control of when to withdraw the cash if you need to during tough times. But either way, insurance offices are getting installed inside real estate and mortgage offices. So therefore not spending that money and, and cycling that money elsewhere. Therefore they capture that revenue to help them increase your cash flow in between closings. And a lot of different businesses, if you're having tough times right now, that's why you see Dunkin' Donuts and 31 Flavors, Baskin Robbins merged together. You saw Long John Silver's and AW merged together. So you see a lot of business coming and working together. You see a real estate office, title office, mortgage office, now insurance office, all coming together. It just makes financial sense. Instead of outsourcing and paying more money for it, once you purchase and acquire that asset, acquire that business and do that internally, not only cut costs, but also increase your revenue. I get this financial strategy and business strategy here by Liver King. Makes sense. 
And, and then we started to figure out like how to get our kids healthy. Right. And when we figured out how to get our kids healthy, like this whole ancestral living thing, we started to figure out why people have oral health issues. Right. And, and I don't know, I started saying this thing cause we got this company that we're quietly launching. It's called strong jaw. And the motto is our early ancestors didn't brush didn't floss and didn't get cavities. So how come the more we brush, the more we floss, the more cavities, the more recurrent decay we're getting today? There's another solution here. Right. It's because all the sugar we eat, it's all the sugar that we have in our food. Soluble vitamins, liver, bone marrow, egg yolks, get some midday sun, mechanically load the teeth. Today we like to eat things that fall off the bone. We're like babies. We like to eat things that fall off the bone that are all mushy. You know, I ask people, hey, what are your favorite foods? I like mashed potatoes. Right. I like, I like fall off the bone. I love oxtail that's been steamed in a crock pot for 24 hours, man. How about you guys? That's me. It's a Filipino thing, probably. This thing, you know, I'm like, oh, you're like a baby. <laughs> you're like a baby. <laughs> this is to our detriment. Right. And so uh, liver queen starts saying, okay, like we got to educate our patients, right? Because we got to treat the root cause because she has the biggest heart, you guys. And, um, and a lot of patients were like, eh, I don't want to hear it. This is nutrition. I just, can't you just fix my teeth? And then the associates at the practice, uh, and, and now that the practice is incredible, mm -hmm. right? But I remember at the time it was like, hey, don't do this thing, you're gonna put me out of business. But th this is how it evolved. It was never really our fight. And then when it became our fight, you're talking about changing a complete paradigm, right? People actually think the more you floss, the more you brush, you, the, the more better your dental health is gonna be, right? It's how you nourish yourself from the inside out. It's how you mechanically load your teeth. Uh, what's so funny, what are you laughing at over here? I see oh, a- man. Oh, it's here. It's oh here. something my. distracted him. Oh, wait, what is that? Looks like they got some Dude, organs. Cutlery board with some of the organs that our early ancestors ate that we don't eat anymore. You see them? By the way, I, I see the one thing I, yeah. I recognize right there is bone marrow. Have, uh, give me some bone marrow. The organs that our early ancestors used to eat that we kind of strayed away from eating anymore. We're going to have some kidney, pancreas, some heart, testicles, bone marrow, and of course, the king of the organs, liver. liver. <laughs> What is this one? Okay. That's testicle. All right, man. That's <laughs> testicle. I ain't no balls, man. I ain't no balls. How did you get my testicle organ. on there? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't you dare, Graham. This, this is really what? telling, right? Because you and I were like, well, we know what that is because we got two of them. And you're like, what, <laughs> what is, is that? that? Hey, but it, you're only that? 20. That? But you're yes. only 20. Were you telling me you don't have a pair of those? This? <laughs> no, I certainly do not have a pair of that, man. I it must be freaking ball testicles your, or something. Your beard is still coming in. You know, it, but here's the thing. This, this is the most valuable stuff that I know how to share and gift. And, and I would love <laughs> to be able to share some of this stuff with you guys. All right. So I'm going to get some B-roll so, of this okay, real quick. So, I so let, me, let me understand. The way he made his money is through dentistry. Okay. So he just presented a bunch of internal organs that he suggests that we should eat to, I presume, look like him. And so I get that fact. And I think the big heat that he's got is that if you eat food like this, you will look like me. And I think a lot of the heat that Liver King is getting right now is because if you eat his food, if you take a supplement line, it's all fake. Because you know why? Behind closed doors, he admitted that he's taking steroids. Approximately $12,000 a month is what his role is right now in terms of steroid use to maintain and, and look the way he looks. It isn't eating liver. It isn't eating kidneys. It isn't eating testicles. It is steroids. I don't know, man. Uh, definitely not raw. If I'm going to actually do it, it's got to be cooked somehow, some way. Uh, I guess in my opinion, sanitized somehow, some way. Maybe it's cleaner that way, less bacteria. Because I know especially eating liver and kidneys, that's where like the, the filtration system is of the body. The, the liver filters things. The kidneys definitely fil filters things. The urine and all this stuff going to the, the waste system of the body. But I don't know if I'd eat that. It's kind of like me eating catfish. I used to love catfish until I realized what it ate. So you are what you eat. So uh, anywho, would you eat internal organs? I want to know, put it in the comment section below. And by the way, did the business advice and, and guidance and milestones and his pathway to earning his wealth, earning his money, uh, sales, entrepreneurship, finding a problem, creating a solution, creating a supplement line. What do you guys think about his business model, how he's made his money? For some of you watching the Liver King and you don't agree with how, He's lied to a lot of people. What are your thoughts? Put in the comment section below too as well. You know, it's it's one thing to say, I have this company and if you take my product, I look like this. But if you were just caught cheating and if you were lying about how the way you look and the health that you have because of steroids, I don't know, man. I like to see how this guy re recovers from this. I hope he hired with all the money that he's making. He hires a publicist to help him with this 
with this uh, with this issue because it's not going to go away anytime soon. And I wonder how much money this is going to cost him from a publicity standpoint for a lot of people not trusting him and believing him. I mean, if he honestly just said from the get from the get go, hey, listen, I'm not natty. I take steroids. I take certain uh, 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 supplements, growth hormone, et cetera, et cetera. I think a lot more people will believe in him. But now the fact that he's exposed, he must have pissed off somebody for them to expose a leaked email that he's actually taking steroids that he's not looking the way he looks because of his product and eating raw internal organs. But anywho, what are your thoughts? What are your questions? You agree with me? You don't agree with me? Please put it in the comment section below. Before I let you go, please check out this video here, an interview we did with Adam Sostek, who made a apology to Andrew Tate about leaking certain information about his family. So please check out this video right here too as well. Adam Sostek here of Sauce Talks on Value Time and Money. If you haven't done so already, please purchase your copy of the best-selling Amazon book in three different categories, Faith Made Millionaire. And uh, if you haven't done so already, if you watch this video, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our videos, please hit subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.